Okay, good morning, everyone. This is our week eight of Pathways to University Education, Training and Employment. Today, we are going to learn more about the process of applica application writing for jobs. Uh, last session, last week, we learned together where to search for jobs. So I showed you a range of options that you have, mainly online websites that you can go through, you can search for the jobs that you are interested in. And then we learned that it is important to read the job advert. And it's very important to understand the job advert, understand the, the roles that you are going to, or you are expected to play in that job. Also, it's important to understand the expectation of the employer. So what kind of person with what kind of skills and what kind of experience and what kind of education they want to recruit. And the reason that it is important is because if you understand the job advert correctly, if you understand the role correctly, if you understand the personal specification correctly, then you will be able to write a good, powerful, and relevant application. Again, if you remember from last session, we said that in the past, it was mainly about sending a CV. But these days, CVs are not that important. Even in, in many jobs, they ask you not to send your CV. They want you to write an, a statement or to fill an online application form and show how you can meet and address the requirements of the job and the personal specification requirements. And I'm going to show you how to read, how to break down, how to understand, and how to respond to those requirements in your written application, also in your interview. And this is all part of the, um, the planning Part because if you remember, we had three P's of success. And then the most important one, especially in the stage of life that you are in, is to have plans. So having, being aware of the requirements, it helps you to plan for your um, future job applications by starting writing statements. So it's very important for you to start write your um, application as soon as you can. Even if you are not planning to apply for jobs now, it's always good to have a good um, statement because it takes time. You need to write it, you need to revise it, and you need to ask others to give you feedback on your statement. If you remember from last week, we talked about skill set. And as I showed you, almost every single job advert in, in the UK, they are looking for people with one, two, three, or more of these skills, starting from uh, business awareness, being aware of the job that you're applying for. So if you are applying for an engineering job he here in the UK, they want you to understand the, 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 the market. So the, the the rules, the regulations, what are the responsibilities of an engineer, um, and, and so on and so forth. So in your statement, you need to show that you understand the, the market and that business here in the UK. So if, if you are applying for nursing, you need to show that you understand um, the, the work of NHS and the structure of NHS and for other jobs, uh, as well. Communication, being able to, um, to express yourself and to understand others. And it's not just about language, as I said last, year, last week. It's partly about language, but it's mainly about your skills in speaking with others, in communicating with others, and in understanding people, especially in, the, in, in, your, in your workplace. Enterprise and entrepreneurship, in, in the sense that companies are looking for people who are 
who are ready to take initiative and take responsibilities. Information technology, it's becoming more and more important for people to, especially now that everything is on computer, many things are online, people working from home. It's very important to know how to work with IT and it's very important to show that in your and to mention that in your statement you are able to work with email different microsoft zoom uh, oh sorry, sorry zoom microsoft teams microsoft word or other um, IT um, softwares or hardwares that could help you in doing that job numeracy working with numbers especially for some jobs, it's very important for you to have that numeracy, math skills, problem solving. Every single job, as, as far as I can remember, they would like someone who is very good in problem solving and resilience, being able to cope with hard, hard difficult situation, with the challenging situation that you may face in your, in your workplace, self-management, and a very important one, again, teamwork, because mo most of the... In, in most of the roles, you are ex expected to work as part of a team, and it's very important for you to have and to show that I have those team team skills uh, and teamwork team working skills. So I'm going to show you later how to um, write them down in your in your application. So. Um, when you are writing a letter of personal statement, first of all, it's very important to do a sort of search or research about the company and the job that you're applying for. So most of the time, the best thing is first of all, to read the advert. We are going to, to see some adverts together. And secondly, to go to the website of that company and try to learn more about the company, about the culture, about the values of that company. And it helps you to prepare yourself for writing the application and prepare yourself for the interview if you get shortlisted for the interview. So make sure that you go to the company web page, you read about their aims, values, ethos. This is the same if you are applying for universities. So most of the time universities, they would like to see you have written something about university in your application. So they want you to, they want to see you went to their website and you you did some search about the rank of the university, the strengths of the university, and how the university can help you to achieve your goals. So make sure you show that you did your research. You need to search to do a bit of research about the sector. So if you are, if this is your first time applying for an engineering job. Um, or a, a nursing job or a teaching job here in the UK, just do a bit of research about the, the, the wider sector, the wider market in the UK, and add some points to your application so, and to show that you understand the market. The third and the most important one, carefully read, break down and understand the job advert so that you can write a good a statement and a good um, interview if you get invited to the, to the interview. So basically, what you need to write and how you need to write them on your um, application form. So first of all, you need to write about your personal information. So usually you start with a very brief introduction of yourself relevant to that job okay so you need to write your name your contact details you don't need to mention your age you don't need mention your sex gender race nationality or religion okay make sure that you you don't write those kind of information on your um application or even on your CV because here in the UK if, if you if you read uh, job adverts at the end of all job adverts they say we are an equal opportunity employer so which means they give equal opportunity regardless of your age sex race nationality etc so it it shouldn't be matter 
to the employer your religion, your age. So they recruit you based on your skills and competences and experience. What they want to see is your name and contact detail. Then you need to explain your educational background. So the courses that you passed, university degrees that you have, qualifications that you have, um, the, the kind of achievements, if you were like the best student in your class, if you were the best employee of the month in your workplace, you need to write about your educational background. Your work experience is the, the next part. So you need to, to explain your, your history, including the duty. So don't just mention, oh, I was customer assistant. You need to explain the kind of duties that you had in as part of that job so that they can see and they can realize your skills and competencies so some people just say i was an engineer in saudi arabia for seven years okay engineering in different countries could be different you need to explain your remit your tasks your duties that you had to do as part of that job so if you are saying i was in saudi arabia for seven years doing an engineering you need to say i was in charge of project management or i was a team leader or I was in charge of this specific uh, technology or device. I was the person in charge of writing the reports and so on and so forth. So make sure when you're writing about your history of employment, explain the, the works, the duties that you, and the remit that you had as part of that job. That's very important. And many, many people, they forget and they fail to write about their uh, specific uh, the specific things that they had to do as part of their jobs. And then the most important part is to write about the competency-based questions in the, in the advert. I'm going to show you what are those competency-based questions, but this is the main most important part. When employers, they read your statement, they want to see how you meet and how you address a personal specification requirement of the job advert. So we will learn more about this. And then at the end, you write your, your personal, a very strong, powerful personal statement. With, by, by statement, I mean just like one or two sentence with, which shows that you, you are the best person for that role. And you are given the pledge that if you give me the opportunity, I'm going to be the most engaging, um, productive person for your team. So these are um, five main points that you need to write in your personal statement for most of the job applications that you are going to send. And uh, as I said, the main part is competency-based questions. And then the second part is your work experience explaining specifically what you were doing in your previous jobs. Any question before I go to the next slide? Okay, so first of all, when you read a job advert, you need to understand what skills employers want. Again, reading the job applications of many students in the, in the past few years, most of the time, they keep talking about who they are without writing about the person that employers want. OK, so it's it's important who you are, but it should be something that they want. OK, if you are the best person in um, geography or in, I'm not sure, science, but they are looking for some person who is the who is good in math or in French language. It, it it's not any helpful to write I'm the best person in um, geography. So you need to, first of all, understand what they want and write who you are based on what they want. That's why it is important not to send one application to 1,000 uh, employers. You need to write every application based on what the um, employers want. And it's important not to lie. So sometimes you can 
speak very highly, very good, very positive about yourself, but make sure that you are not lying. So you are not exaggerating because first of all, they can understand this is their job. They are experienced. So they can realize if an applicant is exaggerating about themselves. And then the second part is when they invite you to interview by questioning you, they easily can see that you lied in your in your application. So if if you see that the job is not for you based on what they want, don't apply basically. If they want someone who is a good team worker, but you are not a good team worker, it's better not to apply instead of saying that I'm a team worker and then going to interview and then not having any example of teamwork to explain. But most of the time, you have some good skills. So make sure that you are talking about your skills, your positive skills, but those who are relevant to the job. Uh, your writing style. So when you are writing for, for a job application, it's different with writing for university because universities, they can understand you're a student, you're coming from another country, English is not your second language and it's about learning going to university. But in most of the job uh, opportunities, they want someone who is in a, in a reasonably acceptable level of language. So make sure that even if your language is not in that level, you, you get help from others. So spend time on your application, make sure there is no uh, grammar error, there is no uh, dictation error, there is no punctuation error, and then ask others to help you. So give it to someone to read, especially if you have someone who speaks English as their first language, ask one, two, three people to read and, uh, and proofread and give you feedback and comments on your application. It's very, it's very important to use something which is called power verbs. So power verbs showing powerfully that you have done some positive things in the past. So saying that I delivered, I delivered the project, I managed, I was successful, I inspired the team. So make sure if, if you Google uh, power verbs for job application, you will see a list of probably 40, 50 power verbs that you need to show in your, to write in your application so that you show how confident and experienced you are uh, in, your, in your job. And then choosing descriptive words such as uh, effective, consistent, determined, and adaptable. It, these are the words that describe your personality and your uh, skills. So power verbs, they show your achievements. Descriptive words, they show your skills and competencies. Focus on answering the questions and the personal specification of the um, advert, job advert. Don't write something which is not relevant. You waste your time, you waste the space, and they are going to reject your, your application. Give example, if, as, as I uh, mentioned last time as well, it's very important to give example, and we are going to learn later how to uh, give example. So because everyone can say, I'm a good team worker. Everyone can say I'm good in using IT, but if you don't give example, it's just a, a, a claim, okay? You need to give example so that they can see and they can believe you that you have those kind of skills. And it could be just, it, it doesn't need to be like a huge thing. You can say, I'm a good team worker because I, I, I was volunteer in, in a community center and I worked for, for a year as part of a team with 10 other people and together we managed to do this and to do that. So example doesn't need to be uh, very uh, significant, but you need to write about it and you, it, it needs to be relevant. Um, show that you're um, interested and you have some kind of passion for the job. Um, there is no spelling and grammar error. And uh, I, I added some example of question and answer at the end, but don't worry, we will be, we will be these, those question and answers are mainly about uh, interviews. We will have a session on how to prepare for interview. So these are the main things that you need to have in mind when writing about, when writing for jobs. Again, 
when you are reading a job application, as I'm going to show you in a few seconds, it's very important to understand what the what are the expectation of the employer. So let me go to my um, browser. Can you see the, my um, internet browser? Yes or no? Anyone, can you see the page? Can you see the Indeed page? Yes. OK, good. Yeah. Thank you. So when you are looking for jobs online, most of the time you look for jobs online, there are different types of job adverts. OK, so you may see something like this, a job advert like this. So most they have roles and responsibilities. They have the qualification that they want. They have experience required. This is one type of it. It says apply on company site. So if you click on this, it takes you to the company website where you will see the same job advert, roles and responsibilities, qualification, and why to choose to work for this company, Dornan. The second type is this one. Again, they have a role and requirement. It's, it's, it's on a charity's website. They have terms, condition about us, which is again about the company and the, the other information that you need to have. And the third part, this, the third um, type, which you commonly see, is this one, which is for a job on a website, but at the end, they have an attachment which says job description and personal specification. So it may be directly on the web page, or sometimes they have um, an attachment which you need to read. So if, if you click on this attachment, you will see this which again is about the job description, job summary, main duties, and personal specification and experience. So the most part, regardless of the, the type of it, sometimes it, it's, it's a table like this one. I'll show you a table later. So sometimes they put personal specification in a table, but regardless of the uh, design, you, this is the most important part. The, personal specification in any job advert, personal specification is the most important part. You need to read it and you need to write every single part of it in your statement. In many companies, many employers in the personal specification, they uh, make it clear which specification is essential and which specification is desirable. So why do I, what do I mean by um, desirable or essential? If it's an essential and you don't have it, it's better not to apply because they want someone with that uh, actual experience or a specification. So you need to write about all the essentials, okay? You need to show that you have all the essentials but they have some extra qualifications or extra competencies and skills, which they say they are desirable, which means it's good if you have them and it puts you in a, like a higher uh, level than other applicants. But even if you don't have them, apply. It, so you don't necessarily need to have them. If you have them, write about them in your statement. If not, that's fine. Just apply. And it depends on other uh, applicants, if they have them, so they are in a better situation, but if you have them and if you write, you are in a better situation. So it's important to add, to write about all the E's, essentials, and those D's, desirables that you have. For, for instance, here, there is, these are all E's, so you need to have all of them. For instance, you need to have 
a full clean driving license and access to own vehicle. So in your statement, you need to write, I have a full clean British driving license and I have access to my own vehicle. Okay. If you don't write about it, you are going to be rejected, although you may have it. But if you don't write it, because otherwise how they are going to know you have you have that. So that's E, you need to write experience of keeping accurate work records. You need to write, I have an experience of keeping accurate work records with an example, okay? So you need to say, for instance, in my previous job, I was in charge of keeping the work record about this and that. So you need to write about all this one, lived experience of forced migration. It's desirable. If you have it, write it. If you don't, don't worry. You still can apply for the job. For instance, you can say, I have lived experience of uh, forced migration because I came to the UK as an asylum seeker or refugee in 2016, for instance. This is the same for, 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 this, for, for everything that you can see in personal specification. If it's E, you need to write about it and you need to give example. Otherwise, very you are going to lose chance of being shortlisted for interview. If it's D, it's good if you have it, but if you don't have it, you still can apply. And then it's, it's up to you, other applicants, whether they have those Ds or not. Ability to speak Dari, Pashto, Farsi, or Arabic. If you can speak any of those languages, make sure that you write. It gives you some advantage over others. If not, don't be worried. Just be worried about ease. If you don't have them, and it's, it's fine sometimes not to have one of, like here, we have one, two, three, four, five E's. If you don't have one, it's still okay. But if you don't, if you just have one and don't have three or four, it's very unlikely you are wasting, somehow wasting your time applying for that job. And then there are some personal characteristics that you need to show uh, that you have. So the, the, the point is, you don't need to write like a whole page. You need to write just one or two or three sentences about each of them. So together, it could be like two pages all together. But you need to make sure that you address and respond to all of these, which I'm going to show you later. For, for others, it, it, it's not, so some companies, they don't uh, uh, use D and E. So whatever they write, is, is E. So make sure that you address as much as you can. So here, um, they talk about role requirements, okay? So you need to, to write at least two, three sentences about each of these bullet points. And you, you need to show that you have experience to do this. So here, they don't, if, they, if there is nothing about time management, don't write time management in your statement. It's, it's not going to help you. It shows that you didn't read the uh, job advert and it increases the chance of being rejected. So read one by one and write about them one by one in your statement. The more bullet points you write about in your statement, the higher the chance of going to the next st stage, which is interview. And for this one, they want someone with these qualifications, degree. So you, you need just to say, oh, I have degree in electrical engineering. You need to write about your experience and these experiences. And they say would be an advantage here. So would be an advantage means it's not essential, but desirable. Again, it's important to read, break down and understand job advert. They come in different shapes and form and languages. So sometimes they say is desirable, essential, they make it clear and they in, in front of each of the sentences, they put E or D. Sometimes they, they don't make it as clear as others, but here they say would be an advantage. So if you have them, write about them, explain them. If not, okay, as long as you have the, the rest, you can do these roles and responsibilities. So is it, is it clear about what you look for in a job application? Yeah. Okay, so make sure 
that you follow these uh, points. I'm going to go back to my presentation here. So as, as you've just seen, some of the points, there is a very good video, first of all, here, watch the video, that's, that's going to be helpful. But there are different um, sections in any job advert. So they want to know about your qualification and experiences. They want to know about your knowledge and skills. They want to know about your desired and essential skills. And most of the time, they are going to give you how they are going to um, assess your um, situation. So if you look at this, this is a, a job advert from Borough of Brooksburn. I'm not sure where it is, probably it's somewhere in London, around London. And they are looking for a customer service assistant. And this is the table that they are, uh, they, they give and they add it to the, uh, to the job advert. So I just copied and pasted the, the table. There, there were other parts of the job advert about the, the borough, the council, the role. But as I said, this is the most important part when you write about, um, when you write your statement. So is, as you can see, they have a table and in that table, they have two columns, one for essential job requirements and the next one for desirable, which means you need to have most of these essentials. It's very good if you have all, but you need to have most of the essentials. You need to write about them. You need to give example and some of the um, desirables if you have, good, write about them. But if you don't have them, you are still, you still can apply for the job. But if you have them and if you write about them, you are going to be in a better situation than other applicants. So essentials, desirables, and they talk about method of testing, which means if it says application form, you need to write about them in application form. It, here, it says application form and interview, which means you need to write about them in, in application form. They are going to ask questions about these in your interview as well. So you should be prepared for, to answer some questions about um, skills and knowledge and these bullet points here in your interview, which helps you to predict interview questions and to prepare yourself for interview questions. So next session, I'm going to show you how to predict interview questions. It's quite, it's very easy. So if I, now, whenever I go to an interview, I, I still go to, uh, so last time it was uh, before last summer that I was going to interviews for the job that I have now. And it, I, I, it was like this, to predict the interview questions and to prepare myself for interview questions based on the job advert. So if you learn how to do it, you will be prepared for every job interview. So from here, you can understand what to write in your application and what to be prepared for in your interview. The second one, experience. Again, you need to write about your essential, desirable experience in application and interview. The third one here, in terms of education, they are not going to ask any question in, in interview. They want to, you to just write it in your application. So which means in your application, you need to write if you have NVQ level two in literacy and numeracy, that's essential. If you don't have it, you wouldn't be shortlisted for interview. And it, it's very good if you have other like customer service NVQ qualification, just write it in your um, um, application, and there is no question about that in, in the interview. If you get the job, they, they want you to send a copy of those um, qualification. Um, and here, again, uh, they want to ask some questions about your other requirements in, in the interview. And they look in, in your past work history. So you need in your, when you're writing about your work history in your, um, in your statement, you need to write about 
oh, I was a friendly, reliable person in my previous work because of this and that. So again, sometimes it comes in the form of a table or they make it clear which one is essential, which one is desirable, which makes it easy for you to understand and to know what to write. But sometimes it, you need to go through that and you need to read between the lines about what is important to write in your, in your application. But I keep saying this, make sure that you write about as many as essential as you can with example. It's so important because otherwise, even you are the best person on this planet, you don't get the interview because from that piece of paper that you that they read, they cannot see how good you are. They just see the words. And if you haven't explained it in your, uh, on your paper, it's very difficult. It's almost impossible for them to understand how good you are. That's the main reason that many people coming to me saying that, oh, I've been here for five years, for six years. I couldn't secure any uh, job. All the applications were rejected. That's part. In, to, to a great extent, that's because of your uh, application, your statement was not written based on the job advert. Sometimes it's because of competition. So there are better applicants for that, for that job. Or you are, but if you are qualified, if you think that I'm qualified for this and you don't get the interview, that's mainly, I can see because of the, the way that you write your statement and application. Again, another example uh, here, they have essential, desirable, and then they say the method of um, assessment. So for, in, for, for instance, for your knowledge, you need to have um, knowledge of health and safety, okay? Or, and safeguarding policies. And you need to write it in your application and they are going to ask some question in your interview. So probably you are going to write, I have, uh, I, I had um, training in safety and safeguarding policies, and I have a, a, the level two or level one or level three qualification in health and safety. And in my previous job, I work, that was part of my responsibilities to, uh, supervise the health and safety in my workplace. So this is for, for all of these, there is no desirable for this job. Everything is essential here. So you need to write about as many of them as you can. And here they say application form, interview, for so, the references for some of the jobs, they want you to, to provide some reference letters and they want to see that those skills in, or those competencies in your refer, reference letter. And for some jobs, they want you to send some documents, especially if, you, if it's about uh, university qualifications and professional qualifications, they say documents. Again, I'm trying to show you how to read, how to analyze, and how to understand the requirements based on the job adverts. Most of the time, whatever information you need is there. The only point is you need to spend enough time to go through it, to analyze it, to break it down, and to understand it so that you can respond to that. Any question? Do you think you now you are better in analyzing job adverts? Yes. OK. So uh, the next part is uh, If, if you remember this slide, I said you, in, in, in your statement, you need to write about personal information. You need to write about your education, experience. But the most important part is competency-based questions, as if you go, which means that table, okay? Those personal specification skills, experience, knowledge, and essentials and desirables. But how to write about them? Um, when you... in when you go to interview, most of the time, they ask competency-based questions based on tell me about a time that you had to work as part of a team 
or share an example of a time when you managed to solve a problem or describe a time when you uh, successfully communicated um, an issue with or to your manager or have you ever been involved in a, in a teamwork okay so these are mainly for interviews but the, the, this is the same for job application writing the, the technique that i'm going to show you you can use it both for your writing your application and preparation for interviews to answer these kind of questions so we call them competency based questions which they want to see the skills, the knowledge, and the experience that you have. Uh, the technique that I'm going to explain is called STAR. STAR is very um, useful. And if you go to university or in, in, in the UK, in most of the universities, when they train you for job applications, they are going to, to show you the STAR technique. And most of the employers, they want you to write following the STAR technique. So if you follow the STAR technique, it shows that you are trained for, for job applications. So the STAR, S stands for situation, T for task, A for action, and R for results. So when I give you the ex an example, it's going to be uh, more clear about what do I mean. But basically, when you write about any of those bullet points, any of these, let me go back to the table. When you write about any of these bullet points, you need to follow the star. So here, ability to communicate. You need to write following the star, given a situation, the task, the uh, action and the results. And then same for the next one, and same for the next one, and same for the next one. Which means for each of these bullet points, you need to write about four short sentences. I'm going to show you an example. And then if you are going to interview, again, similarly, starting with situation, um, task, action, and results. Um, situation means. Um, Just give me a second, I need to move the slide. Okay, so situation means, given an example of one day, one year, one month, that you were in a position, okay? For instance, where, where, where when I was in Syria, where I, when I was a student in Nigeria or Cameroon, or where I was working for Tesco in um, Manchester, so that's situation. You need to make it clear about you are talking about a situation in your workplace, in your personal life, in your place of study. Okay, so it's 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 like telling a story. That the second part is about task. So, what was the thing that you had to do? What was the overall objective? For instance, saying that um, I was in charge of. Um, arranging for a day trip to um, London, okay? So where I was a volunteer in Bristol, that's the situation. I was in charge of, or I was working with a team to arrange a day trip to London. That's the task. You were in charge of ar arrangements and working as part of a team. Action. So what did you do? to do it successfully, to arrange the, the uh, day trip successfully. And this is the main, most important part, okay? Uh, how you made the arrangement. So I had a meeting with my team and I allocated people with different roles and then we, and with, with a timetable. And then I kept reviewing and supervising them and having feedback from them. And so, the actions that you have done as a, as a team manager or team leader. So what were those actions? And then finishing with the results or review. And finally, as a result of having a plan, having a structure and having meetings and communications, we managed to do the, the day trip to London successfully and everyone was, was happy. And we had very good feedback from people that, who that we took to London. 
So you see in two short sentences, you can explain all of this. So you don't need to write the whole page or the whole paragraph to show that you are a good team leader. I was in Tesco, I had five staff. We had a challenging situation. I, I asked everyone to come for an emergency meeting and then I allocated people with different roles and we, we managed to handle that situation. So two sentences, but doing S-T-A-R and it makes a difference in the sense that you are not just saying that I'm a good team manager, but you are giving actual example and employers, they can see that you are not just claiming, but you have evidence to prove your, your skills. So another example, so most of the time um, in interviews, but if teamwork is part of the job advert in your statement, you need to write about a time when you worked well with the team. Okay, so following the star, the situation could be in my previous job as an event coordinator or work with a team of five to plan and, and execute company events and conferences. Last year, we collaborated on the company's annual holiday party for over 500 employees. So explaining the situation, what was your role and what was the situation? Working with 500 employees to make it something important. What was your task? There were so many moving pieces. Everyone on our team had different responsibilities, but we all had to work as one unit to bring the party to life, showing that it was about teamwork. The question is about teamwork. So here you say that the main task was to bring everyone together as part of a unit. So showing the teamwork. What did you do? Your actions, your actual actions. And this is, as I said, the most important part. Even though I was the most junior person on the team, I organized the project management system. So showing that you have those skills that would allow us to check in with each other daily. So facilitating that communication. They'd never done this before, but everyone loved the virtual task tracking feature. Okay, this is very easy thing to do. Probably if you, if you want to take your family to, to a day trip, you do some communication, you manage some uh, stuff, you have a list of what to take, you give people different things to do. It's important to write it. So that's teamwork, that's team management skills. And, and this, this one is not even a paid job, it's a volunteer job. So what you write about or what you explain doesn't need to be like a management job in a big company. You, it, it needs to be about your life, in your personal life, volunteer jobs, being a student or whatever roles that you had in the past. And then finally, results. Thank you. Thanks to the new system, our team meetings were far more productive and we ended up ahead of schedule. So that's a very good result, doing everything before the deadlines. Ultimately, our team's collaboration lead, led to uh, what our CEO called the best holiday party he had ever attended. Again, showing a very good result. I added a link here and you can see uh, star examples for other questions and other situations and other skills for communication skills, for time management skills, for team leading, le team working skills. And so there are many questions on that website. And then just if you um, Google star uh, technique examples, you will find thousands of examples online. So, but make sure it's easy. If you think about it, and if you remember the, the kind of experiences that you had in the past, then it's easy for you to explain following this S-T-A-R. Any question? Is it clear what do we mean by a star and how you are going to write and prepare your statement? Okay, so let's see. When I send you the... the um, slides, I'm going to email you some guidelines to how to create your CV, how to write your cover letter, how to fill your job application, how to prepare for interviews, and how to develop your LinkedIn profile, okay? So some of these, I 
covered last week and this week, mainly about your CV, your cover letter and uh, job application and personal statement. We are going to learn more about preparing for interviews and how, why it's important to have a LinkedIn profile and how to create a LinkedIn profile in, in, in the next week's session. And I added a link to how to become it's, it's an interesting uh, web page that I have come across. Let's see how to become. When you're, start, when you're looking to start a new career, you can go to how to become, and there are a range of careers on this. So these, these are not necessarily like top, uh, professional careers, but many people thinking of how to become a police or how to become a train driver or how to enter the armed force or how to enter the, these are mainly like public services, um, aviation, beauty, business, civil service, criminal justice. So there are different categories of jobs that you can find here on, on how to become. And then if you are interested in any of these, for instance, how to become a paramedic ambulance worker, you can just click on how this, and it shows you different kind of trainings, uh, a range of resources, and more explanation, like practical step-by-step -step explanation about how to become a um, paramedic. And it links you with, the, it's, it's very similar to, um, National Carrier Service, but with a, with a better design. So it's it's more straightforward how to where to start and how to move forward. So you can go from a stage one to a stage two to a stage three to a stage four, and just following that and reading more and more, you, they they will they will connect you with the opportunities available. So make sure that you go through the. Um, how to become and you will learn more about those jobs if you are interested in any of those jobs okay so that was i'm going to um leave it here i, un I understand some of you may practice and observe ramadan today so i'm not going to have the usual like two hours for it to be overwhelming uh, if you have any question please feel free to ask your question. I would like you to take time. I send you some of these job applications. Make sure, and this is so important, I can't say how important it, I can't enough say how important it is to understand the job adverts, okay? And to learn the art of writing job applications. Most of the time, people who get the job, they have 50% of the skills, but 100% or 90% of the ability to write the job application. So if you are an average person, but with good application writing skills, it's easy to get to interview at least, okay? So make sure that you know how to read and understand the personal specification, the desirable, the essential, and what you need to write in your job, inter job application. And later job interview and make sure you know how to write about them the star talking you you say you start with claiming that i'm a good person um like here they have um let's see it competencies microsoft packages databases internet and email that's essential you which means you need to write in your statement, I, I'm a good, confident IT user, and I can use this email, this, this, and that softwares and apps. But then you need to give an example, Ta starting with situation, when I was working, when I was studying, when I was this and that task, I had to prepare my assignment using Microsoft Word. Action, I went to a workshop to learn more about Microsoft Word, and I, and I had my um, certificate, certificate of Microsoft Word, and then results, 
And because of that, I was successful in doing my all assignments on time with good uh, design. And then I, I, it resulted in having like, good grades. And I had very positive feedback from my uh, teachers about my use of Microsoft Word. If you do it, it's, it's, it's very difficult for them to reject you okay then the next step is to prepare yourself for interview which is something that we are going to learn about next week any question no sir okay so Thank i you. sent i send you the slides make sure you go through and then in your time start reading more some of the job adverts that you are interested in applying for and if you if you if you already applied for a job and it was rejected, go back to it and see if you've written about all of those essentials and if you follow the star. If not, start revising your uh, statements and in your future applications. Make sure that you read, you understand, you address the job advert, and you follow the um, you follow the star. If you don't have a question, go and enjoy the rest of your day. If you 